Hi guys, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are back at the bench with a little review for you, and this is, yes, more A20 stuff. So we've got some Edward brass, uh, brass in resin wheels for the A20 for the Hong Kong Models kit, and I've got some undercarriage legs from, or an undercarriage leg for the A20 from um, Ali Up Aircraft. Uh, I've also got, I'll just quickly show these, he's also done, at the same time he's developed these, these are the for the Qatari Spitfire, you've got the undercarriage legs there. And these are actually £16 and the nose gear here is £10. So let's have a look at this nose gear first. Now the big problem with the kit part is it's very, very weak. Um, I've got the kit parts here. These are all the kit parts that make up the nose gear. And this is the bag I sent to Ali with all the parts. Um, so this is how he was able to make that from this, basically. Um, so what we've had to do... If you look on here, you've got these great big lugs and they actually fit. The way it's designed to work is you've got the front wheel or the nose gear in two halves fitted together like that. And the way it's designed to work is you slide that over and that will clip into there. And you've got these two D-shaped pieces that align the wheels so the flat spots on the bottom. Why manufacturers do this, I do not know. Why they feel the need to have... You know, if you don't know where the flat spot goes, then I don't think you should be making models. But um, obviously, with a brass leg, because this one's so weak, that is easy to do. Easy to get out. Okay. Obviously, with the brass leg, you're not going to be able to do that. So what he's actually done is... Here you have the wheel. What he's done is made these resin pieces with holes in them basically what's going to happen there is they are going to go one's going to go in there like that okay and the other one is deeper and it's got the d shape on the bottom that's going to go in like that okay that's going to fit in there like that. that's that's fitting in there like that on the other side that one's going to go in there i'm not going to take them off the fret right now and then once they're in there you'll put your wheel up into your main gear you're going to have to drill through because the the hole in there is blind. So you're going to have to drill through after you've put your 3D printed pieces in. I'm guessing this is about 1 millimeter, 1.2. It's 1.1. So drill it about a millimeter. You'll be absolutely fine. That's just a piece of brass tube. And that is going to slide through there. And then all you're going to do then is trim the ends. Yeah, the holes need cleaning out. Basically what's happened there, you can see the hole, the leg is slightly twisted, so we can probably twist that leg back, yes we can, and also bend the tube at the same time. And then that will go in. Yeah, I've damaged the tube. So basically what we need to do is bend that leg around, so this, this shows you just how good this stuff is because it's so, so strong. I cannot find my pointed tool. Where has it gone? Okay, so I found my pointed tool and all I've done is given it a little tweak, just a little tiny twist, just to get it to line up. And now I can put the shaft through and it goes through absolutely fine. Just like so. There you go. So that's what you're going to do. You put your, put your resin parts in there, into your wheel, and then drill through. And then your, your shaft is there. This also means you don't have to have the wheel fitted. Uh, you can fit it at a later stage. And that is quite a snug fit in there. So you might end up with not even having to glue it in. But, um, and basically you saw me bend that tube. All I did was got it on, a, on the bench. A flat metal piece. And just roll it over the top like so. And it will sort it out. Okay, so if you do get some bent brass, that's how you sort it out. So that's all sorted now. So that will go through there. Absolutely fine. Job done. Go on, stop messing about. There you go. Alright, so that's the brass nose gear. Now obviously you've got your plastic parts here that you're going to use. Okay, so you're going to use all of those parts just as you would on the on the kit. And you've got this lump on here that you're going to have to cut off. So that's how the standard kit part looks. So obviously you're going to cut it off at that point there. Okay. So there we are. Very nice indeed. Right. So that's the nose gear. 
and that is £10. And what Ali's doing, he hasn't actually made the main undercarriage yet. The main undercarriage is here, and as you can see, there's a lot to it. I have been led to believe by somebody who's built this model. I only know of one person that's built this model so far, and he's told me that the undercarriage out of the kit is absolutely rock solid. It doesn't need replacing. So Ali has held fire for now. If you have a different opinion and you know that it's not strong enough, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and if that's what we have to do, then I'll get these parts up to Ali and he can make he can make a full undercarriage set. But what he's doing, he's just made the nose gear because that's that's the one we know we need replacing. Um, if you happen to buy the nose gear and then at a later date Ali does do the main gear, you can get in touch with him and he will give you a discount so that you're not out of pocket. So there will be a full undercarriage set available probably one day. And if you want to add the, the, the main undercarriage to your front undercarriage, you'll get a discount so that you won't end up out of pocket. So that's what he's doing there. Personally, the guy that's told me this is absolutely rock solid and doesn't replace him, I trust him 100%. So I wouldn't question his word. But if you actually know different, if, not that you think it looks weak or you think it doesn't look strong enough, I want you to tell me that you know it's a weak spot, okay? So let me know what you think. And so for the second part of the review, we're going to look at these wheels. Now these are resin wheels from Edward. So we've got in here a set of instructions. Very simple on how to put them together. Unfortunately, the A20 has these horrible discs on. You've got beautiful wheels there, all spoked, and you've got these horrible discs that go on. I really don't like them. They have one P38s, B25s. I don't like them at all. They look awful, I think. And, and B24s as well, don't they? But um, I really don't like them. <laughs> so I may even leave them off. So you've got these lovely spoked, these lovely re resin spoked parts here. And you're going to put them in and then cover them up with those horrible photo edge discs. You've got the masks there for masking the wheels for painting them. We have here those beautiful resin 3D printed spokes, spoked parts, which look lovely. We've got the actual resin wheels themselves. And then in here, we have our PE discs for the nose and the main gear. So there's lots in there, but there is a concern. Yes, we have a concern. Let's get one main gear out. If I put the kit part here, and I put the resin part there, straight away you'll see there's quite a difference. This is 1.375, and this is 1.495. Okay, inches. The reason I'm using inches is because the actual tyres on the aircraft, according to my book, were 44 inch diameter. And 44 inch diameter divided by 32 makes 1.375. So I would like to know where Edward got their references from to make these 1.495. Just going to check my dimension. I think it's 1.495. Yeah, there we go, 1.495. Okay, you can see that there. So that equates to about 47.3 inches or something. You can see on here is 47. So somewhere, Edward has got the information that the A20 had 47 inch tyres. But the book I've got and the Hong Kong models kit says 44 inch tyres. Now the other thing that's wrong with the kit is they should have this diamond tread pattern on them. But the kit doesn't have it, it has just a, a radial tread. So let me know what you know in the comments below. If you have any references that tell you that these tyres were fitted, then all well and good, but I can't find anything that says it. Um, I mean, they are superbly cast and they're beautifully made. I mean, you can see the tread pattern on there is gorgeous. Got the tyre lettering on both sides. Really, really nicely done. Very, very beautiful resin wheels. But are they right or are they wrong? The nose wheel is lovely. Um, you can see the nose wheel compared to the kit nose wheel you can see it's this is completely out and the the kit I'm not sure the, I'll ask to show references again but the overall diameter of this one is great it's about 0.81 inches but I'm just looking now at that actual wheel size compared to the kit I'm wondering which one is correct let me just have a quick check okay so using this book Douglas A20 Havoc the ultimate look by William Wolfe. Um, it goes into great depth about everything on the aircraft. Got to be careful not to break that sprue. Um, and you can see here we've got a section on undercarriage, just goes on and on and on. There's loads of it. 
Um, so just a couple of observations here. It's saying in here, I don't know if you can see this, um, but it's saying in here the A20G main gear was a Goodyear 44 inch one piece magnesium alloy casting mounted on tapered roller bearings covered by a hubcap and a fairing cover. The 44 inch tyre was a smooth contour, 10 ply, non skid diamond tread with an inner tube inflated to 42 psi. So, as I say, according to this book, these Edward wheels are too big, but they are lovely. The other thing I've noticed is when you look at this the, the here, you can see the brake detail. Now, when you look at the, the kit part, you can see that we've got that, the actual wheel itself, and then in the, in the brakes, we've got those those holes drilled in there. Okay, when you look at the Edward part, there's nothing, it's just plain. It's just plain in there. So when you actually put the, the your landing gear in there, which I've got here, all you're going to see is the plane. You're not going to see any drilled holes. So you might want to, if you're not going to use these, you might want to sort of cut that centre out roughly and then stick it in there and drill through it as a template or something just to add some detail or even just stick that bit in there. Um, not really too sure, but um, yeah, I think Ed Edward have missed the, missed the ball on this one. Nose gear, um, different story. It's absolutely gorgeous. The kit nose gear, again, has the lovely flat spot on the bottom. Uh, but the wheel is, what's that, point, point 0.4, so point 0.432, that's going to be about 14, something like that. But the wheel is actually a 10 inch, it says here, da -da -da -da, the Hayes nose wheel was a 10 inch aluminium alloy casting with a removal flange and dust covers for the bearings. The 26 inch smooth contour self with tyre with a 26 inch inner tube inflated to 53 psi. Okay, so the actual OD of the nose gear is absolutely fine, but the wheel itself is too big. Um, the Edward wheel, I've got it here on the on the undercarriage leg, is lovely. Um, really is nice. Doesn't have those silly flat spots because they know the modeler knows where the flat spot goes. It's generally on the bottom, isn't it? Um, so it's it's very very nice indeed. And you, as you can see, if you're using the kit nose wheel, you can fit that on there easily. Okay, and it also comes off easily as well. There you go. So we just pull that off of there. Okay, so and these, if you've got the alley cat set, these little resin pieces fit in there beautifully as well. Okay, so no problems there. You can see there, there's the nose wheel on the actual aircraft there. You can see it has that very smooth, smooth look to it. So, um, yeah, on the whole, very, very nice. But, are these wheels correct or not? Um, I guess the thing to do is see how they look when they're on there. I've had a chat with a couple of people on the A20 page over on the, um, on the uh, Facebook page. So, um, sort of carry on talking to them, I guess. But something I did notice is when you look at pictures of the A20 looking directly across, the top of the tyre generally falls directly in line with the belly. If they're looking straight across the belly of the aircraft, generally falls visually in line with that top of that tyre, so that's something else to look at. So there we are, so that's been a quick review of those. Um, as I say, questions, observations, notes, whatever, please put them in the comments down below, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are really interested in what you've got to say. And, uh, and if you know that these tyres are actually correct from a certain manual or something, then uh, again, please put that down below as well. Thank you for watching, see you all soon, bye for now.